a privilege to have someone so special by my side who loves me unconditionally. My mom taught me how to value things in life and to fight for my dreams despite the challenges. Her love is capable of transforming anything. I'm so inspired by her hard work and I want to honor her and be like her. Seeing her smile fills my heart with joy. I lift up a prayer that God continues to give every mother favor and grace. I love you, Mom. I love you, Mom. I love you, Mom. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Wow. I'm going to ask a couple moms to join me here on stage. Yeah. If they could come up right now. Come on, somebody. Come on up. Everyone give them a round of applause. <laughs> Welcome, ladies. Everyone say hello. Before they, we get started, I real quick want to ask a couple of the kids of these moms. For some of you that don't know, this is, uh, we have Sandra Woo! Gonzalez. Woo! Sandra, your, your oldest son, I think, just became our youth pastor here at AO Church. Come on. Then we have uh, Pastor Cassandra, her and her husband, Oliver. Both her kids serve as ministers of preteens and everything else this church does. Give them a round of applause. Sessie. 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 How many of you love our worship here? So Sessie, her daughter is our AO worship director, Vanessa's mom. So real quick before we started, I, I asked some of the kids that their moms are on stage to come and just say real quick something. For, can you share something, a moment, maybe a habit or something that, an experience that illustrated the impact that your mom made on your life? Come on, let's go. Oh, oh, oh. What's your name and who's your mom? My name is Andres, and my mom is Sandra, Mami. So, mommy, happy Mother's Day. I love you. Uh, a moment that has really, oh, not a moment, but just a practice that has really been um, integral in my life is just waking me up and taking me to church every Sunday, every Wednesday for Jesus Kids Club, and every Friday for the preteens and for Next Level, and, and making me uh, pray at night, making me memorize Bible verses, I think has been such a... Uh, a blessing in my life and and to my identity I know that first of course above all I am loved by God but after that I'm loved by my mom and I always have that and it's unshakable and nobody could ever take that away from me I love you and Sandra I'd always see like when when Pastor Josue's about to preach or while he's preaching I'd see you praying you know, I could tell you were praying for him the whole time under his breath and make it sure, oh, Lord, be with him. Um, that's amazing. Yeah, thanks, Mom. I want to go to Pastor Cassandra. I talked to Crystal. Come on. Crystal, if there's a, a moment, uh, something you've seen, an impact that your mom has made to make you become the person you are today that you'd like to share with her. Hi, Mommy. Um, I'm going to try not to cry. Um, I don't know. I, my, my mom's just done so much forever. Um, I, I don't even know where to begin. I think um, just to pinpoint a few things, um, I think your bravery has been unmatched to any person that I've ever known. Coming to this country at 24 years old with just my dad and just figuring it out with us has been the, the story of a lifetime. And I want to thank you for your bravery and your honor and your virtue. And... Um, and just your life of sacrifice. My mom has sacrificed everything for us. And I think the most impacting, well, not the most impacting, but just one of the impacting moments in my life is when you decided to go back to school for Nazareth and I to show that a woman, you know, can get her degree with even a second language, being a mom, a wife, uh, working and doing school. And I want you to know that sacrifice wasn't in vain. And I want to thank you for this fruit 
and the seed that you planted in Nazareth in us, and I hope you could see that your labor has fruit, and that we are just beautiful women of God because you've been the most amazing woman of God that we have ever had an example to be. So thank you, Mommy. Pastor Cassandra, she, her and her husband, Pastor Oliver, are the pastors of our preteens ministry. They've been here for over 25 years, and they do anything and everything when it comes to kids, to the youth. We are in good hands here at AO Church. We have an amazing team and legacy that's been, that has, has been laid out for, for our kids and our kids that are taking over this church. It's unbelievable. Thank you for sharing. Also, Cecilia, Ceci, Ceci, oh my goodness, I mess it up all the time. Um, Vanessa, it's your moment. <laughs> Vanessa, share with us an experience, a, a moment, something that your mom has done that has truly impacted your life to help you become the mighty, amazing worship leader that you are today. Wow, well, I mean, there are so many things that I can talk about, but um, so... Pastora Mariam, I don't know if she's still in here, she always makes the same joke about me, saying that I was basically born here, like in this chapel, in the back row to the left. Um, and honestly, it's, it, I have been in church my entire life, and it's been because of my mom. I remember um, to just be a little vulnerable when, when I was that little, she was a single mom. But some of my earliest memories are just being here and just running around the back while she's practicing for the worship team and, and even just being in the car and hearing her like practice her harmonies and sharing scripture. I remember I would look through her Bible sometimes as a kid. I didn't even know how to read, but I would see that everything was highlighted. So I would go and get my Bible and just highlight everything, not even knowing how to read, but I just wanted to be so much like my mom. And... Even as a, as a kid, my brothers and I, we would see how, how important the Lord was in her life and how important serving was. And therefore, that's what I grew up in. I've, I've, I've never had a season in my life where I wasn't serving. And she taught me that. And it wasn't in a, in a, in a way of like, we have to do this, but we get to do this for the Lord. And so I love you, Mommy. Thank you. <laughs> And you sing on the Spanish side. I think you sing here sometimes, or we need to have you sing over here. <laughs> Come on, somebody. We needed to sing. But look what has happened since March 1st. Vanessa became the director of worship for AO English. And <laughs> your imprint has been amazing. Amen. So the Bible says to honor your father and your mother. And moms, we just want to honor you all today that are here in this room. And also wanted some of uh, the great moms of AO Church to just come and kind of share a little bit um, because, of, because we have just heard the results of your impact, the things that you've done on a consistent basis, uh, even in your imperfections, what God has produced is, is, is amazing to see. And it's an inspiration for every mom here uh, from all different types and backgrounds and walks of life that no matter what has happened in your life, God is faithful and your example means everything uh, to the kids. And now we can see the fruit of what's taken place. I had a few questions that I wanted to ask you guys because I know you love talking on the microphones. <laughs> and um, if you want to share... <laughs> Maybe your name, your background, but maybe an experience, a moment as a mother uh, where you felt your faith in God uh, gave you strength, a moment that you really needed strength. And, uh... oh, well, I'm Cecilia. Um, I'm here almost 30 years, 29 years, more or less. Um, it's God's grace. It's God's grace that allows us to do what we cannot do on our own strength. I'm sorry, but English is not, it's definitely not my first language. So this was, this was a trial of faith for me to be here. <laughs> they, they know that. But, but um, 
I've been through so many situations since I came to the Lord because uh, the Lord pulled me from very dark places. Let's put it that way. Um, but once I knew about his grace, his forgiveness, the restoration, how he turned my life around from being someone that was worth nothing, then in to a daughter of God. And then his sanctifying power coming upon me. It was the most amazing thing I had ever experienced because I came to the Lord and I was almost 30 years of age. And um, I felt his love. And I understood he loved me. And because he loved me, he left me his word. So I, I dove into the word. I asked the Holy Spirit to teach me the word. And I learned. And I asked him to reveal that word to me. And, and he did, and he continues to do that. But one of the, one of the most difficult times, besides the fire at my house that Anselis went through, I can understand the joy and the peace that surpasses all understanding. Um, I was at church when I was um, told that, that my house was on fire. I got there, and when I saw that my family was fine, nothing else mattered. Um, and I just felt bad because my clothes were dirty from the smoke, and I couldn't come to church on Sunday. The fire was on a Saturday. Uh, but really, when my daughter had her surgery, um, I don't know if you know, but she had a malform malformation on her brain. And from day to one day to the other, they have to do surgery on her. And I would hear what the, what the doctors would say. They would come in and out of the room and say so many things. They would decree um, death over my daughter, but I had met the Lord, and I have learned his word, and the word of God said that she should live and she will not die. They told me that if she um, happened to survive, then she might be paralyzed. After the surgery, which was supposed to last several hours. It only lasted a couple of hours. Um, they were expecting her the following Monday at physical therapy. They expected her to come in for me to take her by wheelchair. She went in walking. They didn't even know she was the patient. But that's God. When you read the scriptures, and you make him your own, you can stand on that because he is our strong foundation and he will never, ever fail you. Amen? Cecilia, hold on one second. You mentioned dark days. We all go through dark days. Oh, yeah. We need forgiveness and, and we go through hard times. I'm sure there's moms today that might be in a dark day today and might be going through a hard time right now. Would you, would you real quick, maybe all the moms here, put your hand over your heart. I don't know who that is, but could you pray for them? Oh, for those yes. that are going through dark days, those oh, that yes. need forgiveness, those that need the word. Why don't, we, why don't you pray for them right now? Oh, I would love to. Um, so if any of the moms here are going through hard times or dark, dark places, uh, because each home... It's a world, a different world, right? And sometimes we see people here and we see them doing good, but you don't know what's happening at home. And yes, this was a very dark uh, situation, but I've been through so many others. And his grace and his word, like I said, all the glory to him, that's what got me through. And I've been able to help other, other mothers because when you go through something that's very difficult, the Lord then uses it for his glory. So if there's any mom here um, going through rough times, if you want to get up, I would love to pray for you. Anyone here? One thing I learned to do is to be humble and not to be embarrassed. 
not to ever be embarrassed. Whatever calling there was, I was the first one running to the front. Nelsito knows me from the very beginning. Nelsito and Sandrita, when we were singles back single. Any, any mom here? Any mom here believing? Come over here, love. <laughs> <laughs> So if you would just put your, your hand. Lord, I give you thanks for this mom, Lord. I give you thanks because she knows you, she loves you, and she knows that you've got her, Lord. I ask you to strengthen her, to keep on believing for that which you have promised, Lord. I ask you, Father, to to encourage her every day as she seeks you, Father. She is a praying woman, Lord, and you love to hear her call your name. I thank you for the purpose. I thank you for the wisdom that you give her, Father. I thank you for her life because blessed is the fruit of her womb, Lord, and that which you have promised her, she will see in the natural because she has already seen it done in eternity. I thank you for her life, for her purpose. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Pastor Cassandra, share with us for a moment, because she's the wonderful, she pastors the preteens, and you do such an amazing job. All the kids, I don't know if you saw the retreat the other day, the Rooted. Uh, all the kids. I saw. I met all. I saw these preachers on stage that you guys have been uh, imparting your life into for all these years. And but for the moms here, I'd love for you if there's a moment uh, in time where your faith was strengthened because of an experience you were going through, a moment that God came through uh, as a mom. That maybe that you could just share that happened with you that might encourage others that are going through the same thing. Yes. Like Ceci said, this is my second language. That's okay. Ceci and Sandrita, if I need help, you help me. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's been many moments, but I have the blessed that my daughters, they're really, really good um, women of God. And um, we didn't have, I didn't have that many moments, but um, Nazareth, when she was 16, um, um, they sent her to do um, finish high school in Miami Day College. She finished um, her associate degree before her, her high school. And um, she finished there. And um, at that moment, uh, she started taking a class in religion. And uh, she started doubting in a moment about uh, God and what, whatever we were been planting for many years. Um, the identity of Christ. Uh, actually, every time she write an uh, essay or something, uh, the, the teacher put an F on her, on her uh, class um, homework. Um, but that day we start praying, um, Oliver and me, we start praying and praying. And every time she came and after the class, every week, she sit down and ask a lot of questions, and for the glory of God, we was able to answer all the questions. Yeah, I give thanks to the Lord because um, he gave her revelation about the Lord and what really is um, um, the identity in Christ on her. And uh, that was a time where it was... Uh, I see the glory of God. I see that God was taking care of her. Yeah, I know she's planted in the, in the rock that is Jesus. Amen. And Sandra. Sandra. How many boys do you have? Three boys. Three boys. <laughs> my husband, Nelson, and Angel, my dog. So it's all boys in the house. Yeah. Oh, well, let's stretch our hand towards her right now, Father, Please. in Jesus' name. <laughs> Sandra, you've done an amazing job. Pastor Josue is an amazing man of God that's just taken over here. Your story, you and your husband met here at church in your 20s. Did, was it he shared his Bible with you or you shared his Bible with him? How did that? I left my Bible at home. 
and um, the church was used to be here. <laughs> and then um, uh, it's funny because uh, I got here late. And I was here late because we, I was going through a situation at home, really bad situation, and I was just crying. And uh, on my way here, I was crying. I was praying, Lord, you know, there's no place to go pray by yourself. I'm not going to go pray in a, in a park because I'm afraid. So I'm like, where do I go? Do I go? So I got here late. So it was the powerhouse that was the overflow. So when I got there, it was everything is dark because they needed to show the overflow, the, the screen. So I'm like, perfect. This is a perfect place. I can cry. Nobody bothers me. So when the uh, pastor said, okay, you need to open your Bible, I was like, oh, man, I forgot my Bible. He was like, no, if somebody doesn't have a Bible, yeah, get up and share uh, a Bible with somebody. Nelson. Yeah. Uh, like, he got up. And he's like, you want to share the Bible with me? And I was like, of course. And I did. Let's all open your Bibles to Genesis chapter 1, <laughs> verse 1, if you don't have a Bible. Yes. No, that's what happened. How old were you at the time? Oh, my God, Nell. Uh, she, uh, she told me she was 20, but she was actually 19. 19. Yeah. The truth yes, comes 19. out. <laughs> and you were late. Man, God's grace and mercy is always good. God works good. Sandra, I'm sure with three boys, five boys in the house, you got a story, something that happened, uh, a moment, an experience on your journey as a mother where you really felt um, your faith gave you strength in that time. Is there a moment you could share that can encourage us today? That faith gave me strength. I mean, boys, they usually don't talk much, so it requires a lot more faith on the mom. I mean, girls, are, they tend to be more talkative. So it's easier to get to them, and it's easier to see what's in their heart, what is in their mind. But when you have boys, you ask them, hey, how was cool? Good. <laughs> say, Anything else? Great. No. Uh, that was my, my, my conversations. So definitely, I got to say that faith was needed because, you know, they're men, and um, um, that's how they are. So I had to understand a, a, as a woman that men are different. Even my boys are different, and I didn't want to bring them as women just because I like to talk a lot or because, you know, I have emotions, and I want them to show their emotions just as, as I do. So um, I had to pray a lot and have faith in that aspect that God gave me wisdom because uh, I, di I didn't grow up with a father. So we didn't have a male in my home. It's always been females. So come to a house that there's no females and everything is boys was really hard for me because I'm used to hearing women talk and not hear them at all. That was a challenge. It required faith. It required believing that even though they say good, that God would show me what that good meant. You know, I asked the Lord, Lord, the good is it really good? Is it bad? Is it half a half? What is it? And I had to rely on the Holy Spirit. I have to say it. I had to rely on the Holy Spirit to guide me to what that good meant. And, and for him to show me ways uh, to go through and see beyond that one word. And um, that's been a challenge. It's continued to be a challenge. But uh, God is good. And the Holy Spirit has allowed me. I have failed. I have done good, and sometimes I've done really good. But uh, it's, it's just a, it's a process. And I think that as a mom, uh, we don't have it all together all the time at all. And one of the things that I believe that helped me was that the one time that I wanted to have it all together, and I wanted to have control of everything. You know, my kids on their ways and everything. I needed, I needed to have control because I needed to be the good mom that I wanted to be. And, and I would go pray the wrong prayers. And God had to stop me. And he told me, stop. Because I was praying. I was, praying, I was going to God whenever I had a situation, like middle school, that, you know, middle school is a really dangerous ground. And I'd be like, oh, God, I don't have it together now. Elementary. 
It's so good because you get the PTA, you can get involved, you, you know, you're always there. But middle school, you're like, there's no parents, they disappear. And it's like, man, no, they don't want you. Oh, but what happened? Don't they need those? No, they don't need you. They, they want the, the kids to grow. I'm like, but well, I need to grow with them. And they didn't let me. So it was really hard. So I didn't have control. So I would feel like I would grab something and it would go through my hands. Any situation, whatever it was. And, and I wanted control. And God, and I used to go to God and say, Lord, Lord, look, this is what's happening. I need you to solve this, Lord, because of this and this and that. And, and God had to stop me many times. He has stopped me and said, hey, you coming to me to tell me what to do? Or should you come to me to, for me to tell you what to do? You know? So I was going to God the wrong way. I was praying the wrong way. I was praying to God, God, I need you to go and do this for Andres and Joseph. And I don't know what's going on with Josue, but please, God, you know, I know there's something, God, because my heart is not at peace. So please, can you, can you just go? And I would just go to God. That was my prayer. And he told me, you got to run. And he stopped me. He said, you need to come to me so I can tell you what you need to do for them. Don't do it that other way. So in that moment, that was a, that was a change in me. Because he's like, you want to have control? Do you want, you want the control or do you want me to have the control? And I was like, no, but you. <laughs> I can't. I, they don't let me in middle school. They're not allowing me. You know, but thank God. Or else I would have been there too. But you know what I'm saying? So I had to come to the realization that yeah. I had to give him control of my three boys. And when I gave him control, not to take it back. Because we tend to be, we need to know, you know, us moms, we got to be there. We got to be, we got to be the helicopter moms. We got to be there. And, and we don't. You know, we, I understand there's a process that they have to go through with God. I'll be there praying. I'll be there keeping an eye. I'll be there. But God is the one that gives the revelation. He's the one that gives them. He's the one, not me. So every time they say, oh, it was, no, no, Andres, Joseph, I'm like, no, it's not me. Trust me. I, I took that away. Don't put it back to me. I gave it to him. So when you give what you love the most to God and keep it, he'll, he'll take care of it. He'll take care of it. So that's, that's my, my, my thing. Control is hard to give up. Yeah, that's the moment thing. Right? Right? They, did we get that on video? It is a woman thing, but through the years we understand, through the years we understand that um, God has to have the control, not us. God didn't create us to control other human beings. And we, we get in the middle of what God wants to do in our kids. And for every woman, because I know we've been here, there, like trying to control every step and trying to be helicopters, moms everywhere. Like after every decision, um, in my case, I learned that I call them like this um, wisdom moments that I try to t have every day with my daughters, uh, where we sit down. E they can talk about any subject e to see how how they how they processing how they put God there. It make them from themselves to have their own thoughts and give the control to Jesus. Okay. <laughs> no, no, she was giving me the uh -huh. mic and I'm being obedient. But I'm giving guess, up control. You know, I, I can add something. I, I can add something. Uh, through very difficult situations, I've had learned that as well. And I know the times that I wanted things done a specific way, because I have two boys. They are not here today. Uh, but the Lord is working on them in such a powerful way. And, and it's not till I finally said, okay, Lord, that's it. I, I, I give up, you know. <laughs> I give up. They are yours. And... And I can honestly, honestly tell you, God is never late. For those who have uh, children that right now or relatives that right now 
you think they're not believing. Believe me when I tell you that deep inside there is a seed that was planted. And I am seeing that become a beautiful fruit. It wasn't in my time. It was not my time. Definitely not. But it was in him. And, and the word says that he makes everything beautiful in his time. Amen. Amen. Pastor, I want to add something else. Yeah. Uh, um. I was, I, I'm a step here because my dad, you want to, today Mother's Day, I want to say that the male and the husbands, they're very important. Yes. Very, very important. And my dad received Christ first in our home, and I'm here because him. And when I came here to the United States when I was 24, I'm 49 now. Yeah, I'm very, like, uh, blessed to be next to Ceci and and Sandrita that was here before me, and they prayed for me, for my daughters, for, for my marriage many times. And the first, after a month being here in the United States, I told Oliver to bring me a church. It's a second man that bring me to Jesus. So I'm very glad for the men. I'm very, I'm very glad for the, for the fathers. And I think it's very, very important. <laughs> like it. Any advice you can give moms? Anything like that might feel overwhelmed right now as a mother? Any specific advice you can give? Well, whenever we overwhelm, I, in my case, I notice that it's because of lack of prayer. Okay? So sometimes I want to blame the situation and I blame, no, oh, I'm tired because of traffic. One hour and a half, okay? No, because of this. No, and then situations, right? But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what excuse you can bring to the table. At the end of the day, the overwhelmness that we feel is because we're not linked and we're not praying, okay? Because in prayer, if you're praying, you're in God. And if you're in God, the overwhelmness cannot get in there. Okay, the, the, the lack of peace cannot get in there because you're in him, There's, it cannot penetrate. So yeah, you may go through situations, but you go with him. Yeah. And you may go like Alan and Sally says, you know, the fire is burning, but she's in him. So the overwhelmness is lack of prayer. And my thing is for you guys and all of us, because you know, we do live in this world and we do have situations and kids do surprise you every now and then with things that you're like, what? And now, so it's like, and you, you, you know, click. I don't know what to do, the nerve break here that you get. And, and then you're like, you know, let's go to God first. Let's, let's get to him. And, and he says, it, come to me, all you who are burning and, 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 and tired, and, and, and just give it all to him. And when you do, don't put, don't put it back. You know, and if you find yourself putting it back, the Holy Spirit will remind you. Oh, yeah, you got the back again. Put it back. You know, be, let's be humble enough to say, oh, yeah, it's true. Let me put it back. And then continue. And, and like Ceci said, the word of God, you know, he, it cleanses you. It restores you. It gives you strength. It's the medicine yes. that we have. Okay? You know? So prayer and the word of God. You know, and the walking faith, believing that, that when you go pray, he's answering, that he's there. Because if you don't have faith, and while you're praying, it's useless. So faith is important. You got to have the faith that when you go to him, he's listening to you. Okay? Amen. He's not just, he is there. He's listening to you. And when you do that, and when you get up from your knees, you're a totally different person. So, um, yes, that's my, my suggestion is prayer. Can I? Bueno, yeah. Bueno. Eh, yeah. That's awesome. In my case, we get back to the control, okay? Um, when, I, when I see the prayer is number one, and then when you see you're, you're doing your strength and knowing his strength, things fall out of control. Yeah, I learned that um, our kids, in case it's Mother's Day, they're not, uh, they're not problems to fix, they're blessings to hug and to love. And that's... 
in the last year, I've been asking God for for um, an extra or or different kind of love that He can provide me to love things that maybe I don't understand. And every week I check my heart and ask God to be in His strength and not in my strength. And I think that's something that is very important to be checking on us all the time. That's very good. One thing I would like to add, through your most difficult times, yes, obey, yes, repent, yes, pray. But do not ever underestimate the power of worshiping him. When you worship God, that is your hiding space. When you're worshiping God, the devil cannot get to you. And when you are worshiping God and you're honoring him, his likeness is coming upon you. And everything that was out of place in you, in you, because the situation might not change when you're done worshiping. But everything in you would have changed and it would be different. And then you would have the strength to continue with grace and strength and courage. Amen. Don't ever give up. Don't ever give up. And the more impossible things seem, worship more. Because you know what? When God speaks, the devil is just a liar. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's give it up for the moms up here on stage today. Hallelujah. Moms, you've done a, an amazing job of raising some amazing kids. And we are so proud to have you a part of this church, to be leaders in this church, to be an example uh, to the, the other moms in this church. And uh, we bless you. We thank you. We honor you this morning in this house. Uh, real quick, I want to talk to you that are out here. In Ephesians 6, it says, children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. It says, honor your father and your mother. It says, honor them. Honor means to hold into high esteem. We have to realize that God placed your parents in your life to show you who he is, to train you in the way that you should go. And he never said that your parents were going to be perfect. None of them are. Only he is perfect. But I know there could be a lot of us here today you came because it's Mother's Day out of honor. But maybe in this place you realize your moms have been trying to help you live a certain way. They've been trying to point the way to Jesus. And this is what the scripture says. It says, honor your father and your mother. And in verse 3 it says, that it may go well with you. And maybe today you realize life hasn't gone well. Because the examples that God put in your life, you haven't followed. You've kind of pushed back. You've kind of done your own thing. You've kind of gone your own, own way, and it hasn't gone well with you. Today, it's time to make a change. Today on Mother's Day, how much would it be for you to come back to make a new decision, to make a change? To say, you know what? I want my life to go well. I'm going to honor my parents for who they are, but for who they represent. The King of kings and the Lord of lords. You've made many mistakes like we all have. But your parents still believe in you. God still believes in you. Your parents will never forget you. God has never forgotten you. Your parents never have disowned you or said, I don't love you. God has never disowned you. And today he says, I still love you. And this morning could be a morning where 
you make things right with Jesus, where you come back, where you come back to God. Amen. I believe this room is full of people that need to come back. On a Mother's Day, you want to give honor to your parents. But now it's time to follow the example, the legacy that they've already rolled out for you. I want to ask us all to stand for just a moment. Just stand to your feet. And I want you to just think about that. Where are you with God this morning? I was reading the scripture. There was a woman named Hagar that she thought she had messed up. She had heard about God. She was taught of the Lord. But then she was abandoned. She was abused. She was wounded. But the Bible says God heard her prayers and saw her tears. And he sent an angel of the Lord, the very first angel to ever be recorded in history, came to this mom and she proclaimed a name for God, the God that sees you. And I don't know what you've been, what you've been through as a mother and where you're at. God sees you. God hasn't forgotten you. Maybe you're here as a son or a daughter. You, things haven't gone well with you. God still sees you. God sees where you're at, and he's got a great plan for you. And he loves you this morning. He hasn't forgotten you. He hasn't abandoned you. And just like he sent an angel to that mother years and thousands of years ago, his angels are here this morning. And I'm proclaiming the word of the Lord. God sees you. God hasn't forgotten about you. I just want you to close your eyes just for a moment in this holy moment. Maybe today you need to come back. Things haven't gone well in your life. There's a promise that things will go well with you and that you'll have a long life. That all starts with Jesus. No matter what you've done, no matter what you've done, gone through, no matter what sin you've committed, whatever, no matter what dark place you've been, maybe you've been trying to control your life, and today you need to surrender your life. Today it's time to make Jesus Lord of your life. Today is your day to come home. Today, it's your day to surrender to the God of these great women that have proclaimed his name today. With every head bowed and eyes closed, I just want you to put your hand over your heart in this house, in this moment. Maybe you're today, you've never made Jesus Lord of your life. You never said yes to him. You never, God sees you. He loves you. The good news, the gospel. Jesus died on the cross for you. He was put in a tomb for you. And he came back to life for you. And the Bible says anyone who calls on the name of Jesus and surrenders their life to him will be made new today. You'll be born again today. You'll be made a new creature today. His presence will be put inside of you today. He'll turn the things that have not gone well and he'll make them well for you today because he loves you. If that's you, I want to pray with you in just a second. And maybe you're here today. You came as a son, as a daughter with your mother and you realize life hasn't gone well. I've known about Jesus. I've been taught about Jesus, but I'm not following Jesus. And life just hasn't gone the way it should. There's a promise today. If you honor your parents and the things that they taught you, the things that we talked about, life will turn on a dime this morning. Life will be made new. Today is a new day. All things become 
new. The past is the past. And in this moment, you can make a decision to say yes. Yes to the Savior. Yes to the King. Yes to the one that saved a man like you and like me. Say yes to him today. On those two occasions, you need to say yes to Jesus for the first time. Or maybe you're here and you haven't been living for him. You can say yes. You can come back. You can recommit your life to Jesus this morning. On those two calls, just put your hand over your heart. I want to pray with you in this house. And just say this together. Because God sees your heart and he knows your name. And he loves you. And he brought you here today to give you this opportunity to call on his name. Just say, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, this morning, I surrender all. I give you my life. For the first time today, I surrender all. And maybe if I'm coming back today, I make a new commitment to you. I want to honor you in my life. Give me a new heart. Give me a new mind. Give me your spirit today. Today I declare I'm yours. Save me. Forgive me. Cleanse me. Make me new now in Jesus' name. Amen.